as you guys know, I think Roloc is a definite lock to be coming to Overwatch in the near future. Due to the recent Slasher report, maybe it goes into Overwatch League first and we get it later on. We don't know yet, but now with the dust settling of the news, I'm excited to get into the meta implications of what 222 can bring, and I think some of the impacts are unintuitive, as well as the next steps Blizzard might take with the balancing of the game with those roles restricted. Whenever I make a meta discussion video like this, it gets a little bit tricky because I try to talk about all levels of play at the same time, which is functionally impossible, but we're going to try our best anyway. It's a little bit easier to talk about the Overwatch League because there you have the constant of high level play and organization, everybody trying. So you have all the factors to have sort of a consistent test of what a given patch of the game can provide. If you put max skill, max teamwork, max try hard all at the same time, well, you get something like GOATS comp or perfectly executed dive comp from the Overwatch League season one. So through this video, let's look at the meta implications of both contexts and where I want to start off first is a key example from both. In pro play, it's pretty easy for me to say that D.Va's pick rate isn't going anywhere. In fact, it might even go up because if the enemy is going to guarantee to have DPS picks or be forced into a 2-2-2, I think you're going to see a lot more Ana get played. I think she's the best support overall other than maybe Baptiste in the bunker comp. So because of that, D.Va might go up to a near 100% pick rate. The only reason pros sub out D.Va right now is because if the enemy's not running any damage, no Ana, just basic Zen goats, it's mostly Brawl and Zarya damage anyway. D.Va does the least amount against that comp, though still a lot, but it's small enough finally that pros started to swap her out for different flex picks at different points. But in a lock 2-2-2 format, at the highest level of play, D.Va is basically required to outplay all manner of things that are going to be coming onto you. Now, comparatively in the rank context, because D.Va play isn't as pristine from an individual point of view where players take too much damage to their face, snipe at long range, waste DM, and the teamwork's really bad, which makes it harder to get a lot of value out of DM, you can feel like you don't need D.Va. But a lot of times you do, you just need a good D.Va if that makes any sense. On the other end of things, in the ranked context, a hero that I think is going to go up a lot more than you might think is Torbjorn. Yep, good old Torb. In fact, the entire bunker comp with Bastion and Baptiste as well, maybe toss in Junkrat there, any of these DPS characters that can spam down tanks and play in the Orisa comp are going to look way better because so far in the patch right now, up against that comp, I would suggest running three DPS because they got characters like Bastion, Junkrat, Torb. All of them are really weak to multiple damage damage angles, toss in your snipers or even just long range poke characters like Far and Soldier just to whittle down shields and get crossfires poking around corners where these other tank busting characters aren't going to be as effective against. But of course, you're forced to have tanks in a lock 222. You can't go three DPS unless there's a flex slot, which remains to be seen. In my opinion, removing the off tank requirement and allowing that to be an overall flex role would be kind of nice. But I think for simplicity's sake, they're more likely to just go straight 222. But in in any case, we can expect those bunker comps to be way stronger than they are in ranked, and they're already pretty strong. Now into the biggest losers, a whole lot of goats. Characters like Birgitta, Reinhardt, Zarya, even Moira, who's really good in the multi-tank, but as soon as you have characters splitting off, decreases in value exponentially. These characters take really hard L's, but what I'm most excited about is the potential buffs that can come through to help them out, to compete with other characters inside their role. You see, here's the thing. A character like Roadhog has had a very troubled history in Overwatch, where at the launch of the game, he was just a DPS, if you don't remember. In order to stop Roadhog from dominating the DPS slot, they moved him further and further into a more brawly type character with higher sustain and a much more limited hook. But in a world where he has to compete up against Bunker Comp and D.Va, who's going to have a near ubiquitous pick rate in the off tank slot, I think we could see Roadhog get quite a big buff. Maybe he gets some of his damage back. Or maybe we see his shield break damage to go up again in order for him to be able to help deal with Orisa. Because if not, Orisa by herself is one of the biggest winners in all of this. And then Wrecking Ball 2 on the other side from the offensive side of things. The reason being, both of these characters have crowd control that they put through that needs to synergize with damage. Well, that's good if you you have to play damage picks. If the pros don't have to, well, they're just not going to play these characters and instead are going to go to the GOATS comp. But because they're built better to synergize with damage than, say, like a Reinhardt is, they're going to be big winners. Whereas Reinhardt really isn't strong because of what Reinhardt does. He's strong based on the power creep of the game in the format we're playing in today. Having a shield and moving it, keeping your team alive, getting into space, of course, that's always great. But there's so much flanking and dive 
in the game that if you just play a mobility hero, well, you don't need a shield. And if your wrecking ball can come from the sky, you don't take damage on the engage, then you come in, dive in, kill whatever you're fighting. Reinhardt, on the other hand, is really going to struggle up against most of these comps because he's a character that just like Zarya, gets better over time as the brawl goes on and you can pump resources into him. And what the pros essentially did with the 3-3 comp is cheat it, making it so that you have a Brig in the damage slot and a Zarya in the other damage slot, power creeping how much resources you can put into your Reinhardt. It builds Reinhardt up to be much better than his individualistic playstyle. Whereas when we go into a 2-2-2 format, characters have to be much more powerful on their own without needing these big combos to exist. Because of this, in the Overwatch League anyway, Zarya is going to go down to something like 0% pick rate. Because if you look back to last year in the dive meta, she only got played basically on King's Row and Control Center of Li Zhang. But even then, she got played with three tanks. At the top tier context, Zarya has almost always been a DPS swap in order to make a tankier brawly comp. The final form of that is 3-3. But once we're in a 2-2-2, two, 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 Zarya's the most easily styled on tank because whether you're going up against Orisa, well, if your name's not D.Va and you can't eat a halt, that's damage just plowing right into your tank's face. You're dead. And Ryan Zari by themselves get utterly bullied by Wrecking Ball. I mean, I've showed you that with my Wrecking Ball gameplay already. Ball just hardcore counters Ryan Zarya as a 2-2-2. Two, two, two. It's just not playable, which makes me wonder if these heroes might start to get a bit of a buff. For a long time, people have begged and pleaded for Reinhardt to get a bit of like CC resistance. Not immunity, not like what Orisa has, but maybe Lucio's boop doesn't send Reinhardt 100 feet. And especially with how crazy the boop changes are that allow Wrecking Ball and every other boop in the game to just send Reinhardt sailing, I think that seems pretty reasonable about now. Because without that kind of buff, I think Ryan's just going to struggle and look terrible. But with that kind of buff, well, maybe he's starting to be a contender again. Because remember, we need these characters to be able to do something on their own without needing all of the pocket in the world in order to become good. And you might think to yourself, well, why didn't they ever buff Reinhardt in that way before? Well, that would have just made GOAT's comp even more impossible to counter if that was the case. But in a world where you can't overpower Reinhardt by putting three supports onto him, well, then I think he can get some buffs that make him more enjoyable to play as well as a competitor at the top tier meta where he's going to struggle. Now, I brushed over a lot of the damage picks, mainly because a grand majority of them are just sort of fine. The damage category is pretty incredibly balanced. The one outlier, though, at the top level of play is going to be Sombra because she can counter every comp in the game. Farming EMP counters a Risa comp, sets up for Nano Blade and combos like that. That's going to come back in a big way, and she's going to be required to stop Ball from taking over the game. We might see more Winston Diva just because Sombra is such a good answer to Ball. However, if you outplay the hack and still get your shields off and do little tricks like shooting midair in order to stop yourself from getting hacked, there's a lot of counterplay actually to stop Sombra from countering Ball, believe it or not, but I think that's where like the tension point will be. Now onto the support category. There's two characters we have to talk about in great detail. The obvious one, of course, is Brigida, who only saw her actualized power when Lucia was alongside her, plus another support to fill the gaps. There was kind of a myth about Brigida that her healing was bad, and that wasn't true. Her healing was insane. She was the best healer in GOAT's comp, but only in that comp does it become insane, because it either doesn't fight at all or brawls which is exactly what Brigida wants to do, Brig could have a incredibly high Inspire uptime while the fight was going on. Whereas like in a ranked context, we're going to have teammates flanking off on their own, people poking at the choke when you're in regroup stage. So there's all this downtime where Brig would need to go in, get a flail to activate Inspire that she just won't be able to do so. And worse yet, because you can't pick a third support and Brig needs speed to really get around, she's getting doubly hit. Now, the question is, would Brigida get buffs in order to fit into a 2-2-2 and what would they be? In my opinion, I think the easiest course of action is just to start to revert some of the stuff that they nerfed on her originally. I know a lot of people probably want to see her rework to be an actual healer, but I think it makes more sense to keep her healing where it is and just give her the duelist capabilities yet again, because I think that's the gap in the gameplay that Brigitte is meant to fill, where if you're playing support and there's a flanker that you really just can't deal with and you want to defend yourself, well, you can swap to Brig and hit the one-shot combo on a Tracer to kill her, because really, she's going to be so weak otherwise in the upcoming 2-2-2. Two, two, two. And if she doesn't have the stat points in order to secure that kill, well, she's going to do nothing. And I think if you just give her more healing stats, it's kind of a boring way to buff the character, if that makes sense. It's not like Armor Pack is a fun mechanic to go up against. Do we really want that any stronger? In any case, I don't see her being 
a centerpiece in the pro meta game, but in the ranked context, I think you should be able to feel confident that you can swap to Brig, and as long as you play decently, you can take a duel with a damage character that's been bullying you up to that point. All right, moving on. This next one might surprise you. Lucio, I think, is taking a big fat L. Because think about it. What comps is he going to be good in? His big problem is that the other supports, Ana, Baptiste, and especially Mercy, who's a low-key massive winner in 222, all have much more incredible synergy with DPS. Lucio is sick at speeding around ground and pound tanks like Reinhardt, Zarya, and even Roadhog. So if you see those characters get buffed and become playable, well then Lucio starts to look good again. But outside of that, because his speed was nerfed and sound barrier, although powerful, takes forever to charge, I don't know what comp you would want to play him in over another support, other than playing defensively against Dive. I think Ana's going to look pretty strong, so Lucio faring around in Ana is going to be pretty legit, but we've seen Ana Mercy comps already get played. If they're playing damage and you're playing damage, we're not going to be seeing these big team wipes go back and forth like we see in the GOATS meta, which is where I think Lucio needed in order to thrive. But now, instead of being top meta, I think he's just a situational pick, which is to say he's still going to get play because on maps where dives really strong, while well, having the boop consistently disrupt it and be so darn strong, pretty much for that as well as Sound Barrier alone, he'll see some play because you'll be able to protect your main support. And then on the other end of things, on maps where there's massive boot potential, like Sanctum, Ilios Well, maps like that, he'll always be playable on those maps. But overall, he drops down from being top meta, reduced to just solid. Whereas other supports like Ana, Baptiste, Zenyatta, and Mercy all have specific damage heroes that they have crazy synergy with. Zenyatta especially in order to pair up with flankers. Part of the reason we had dive comp be meta for so long is because Zenyatta could discord a target, heal squishy flankers who don't have a lot of HP anyway for a small amount accurately at long range while still putting out value himself, allowing for the dive tanks to come in, burst down targets with discord, and there just was no defense against it until Brigida and Goats came into the meta. Now, the main reason why I wouldn't say Tracer is going to dominate the game like she did back then is because we've seen an outrageous amount of damage buffs. I mean, think about it. Since the era of of Tracer, these are characters that are now stronger against Tracer than they were before. Sombra, for sure. Torbjorn has natural armor. Doomfist has lowered cooldowns. Farah has faster rockets. So does Junkrat. May has no drop off. Hanzo has Storm Arrow. Soldiers back to 20 damage a shot again. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. Back during the Tracer meta, a lot of these characters were much, much weaker versions of who they are today. So although I'm sure we're going to see some Tracer maps come up, where we may again get like a Widow Tracer meta being the dominant two damage picks that get played, especially in the ranked context, it's not going to feel like you have to play those two because they're all pretty darn balanced, the whole category. And on top of that, there's a purple elephant in the room named Sombra, who's just always going to make Tracer look like a bit of a waste of time. So much so that I think Sombra is definitely going to be seeing a nerf once we go into this transition, mainly because she does so many things that a coordinated team can just get insane value out of that no amount of like Tracer mechanically styling around in a circle looks any good. Well guys, that's all my thoughts on the upcoming roll lock that may be going into stage three, if the leaks are to be believed. If you enjoyed the video, please be sure to leave it a like. It really does help us out. Let's just know that you're enjoying the content. And if you haven't already, please subscribe and be sure to hit the bell icon so that you get notified when our videos go live. Link in the description is our Twitter, where we tweet out news, updates, and dank memes. That's been it for me. I've been Frito for your Overwatch. I'll see you guys next time.